Hi, my name is Chris Benjamin. We're here today in beautiful North Granville, Prince Edward Island at Green Island Getaways, a fabulous new ecotourism site um, owned by Alan and Travis Berland. On the bottom, 16. Now, if you look in Alan's DNA, you'll find two things, sailing and engineering. He's been a sailor since boyhood and he represented his native Bermuda at the 84 Olympics. And the engineering goes back to his grandfather who in 1935 designed the first wind turbine in Bermuda. Engineering and sailing came together when Alan and his son Travis sailed to PEI, bought a property and called it Green Island Getaway. It's a fantastic facility and uh, it's a pleasure to be here today and it's a pleasure to feature it in my book Eco Innovators. We're standing here today at Green Island Getaways uh, in North Granville, Prince Edward Island. Uh, and behind me is one of our sustainable cottages uh, that was built in the last year, designed by University of Prince Edward Island engineering students, built by Holland College vocational students. Um, and they represent uh, a way to live in a more sustainable fashion. One of the major themes in, in the cabins was of course there's a lot of technological stuff related to systems but just the whole system of living like smaller is better compact living so so the whole concept of the micro home is, is again very common now in, in a lot of places in Europe and, and even the United States so so bring that whole theme of we don't need 2,500 square foot houses or 5,000 square foot houses that we essentially can live the same functional lifestyle in a 500 square foot home or an 800 square foot home as we can uh, in a 5,000 square foot home was really a theme that, that we kind of keyed in on because uh, just proving the functionality, uh, what you actually need to live and, and we know you can live on less. So, so getting that into the project was really neat. Um, so it, it was interesting to follow it through from the design at the first, then it turned over to our hands and uh, again we didn't have a, you know, a perfected set of drawings from a professional architect, so we had to really workshop the buildings as we built them to figure out, okay, well if you want to accomplish this, how do we do that? Which materials can we use that are more sustainable than perhaps the vinyl soffits that would be normally used in practice in industry? and um, Interestingly enough, in a lot of cases, we went back in time. So we would go back in time 100 years and say, well, 100 years ago they used to use these types of materials because they didn't have vinyl that came out of the plant in Ontario. They had to go and saw a local tree and figure out how to use that to make soffit material. And uh, so that, that was fairly interesting for all of us to recognize the value of local materials and, and, and natural materials. One of the things we want people to consider when they're thinking about adding on to their house or building a new house is to think about building small. Build what you need. Small is, is often good. Uh, the, the fridge and the range and the microwave are all relatively small units. I mean this refrigerator is about nine cubic feet. Uh, but it's adequate for you know most people particularly in starter type homes and uh, we picked energy efficient units. Uh, energy star is typically the type of units that you want to uh, purchase when you're thinking about uh, building a home and conserving energy and again we picked appliances that uh, don't have a, a you know a big demand on energy. The idea behind these cabins is to have uh, guests come visit us at Green Island Getaways to understand sustainability, energy efficiency, uh, renewable energy, and uh, really take some of these concepts back home with them. So once you come and stay in one of our cabins and understand what it's all about, maybe you go back home and uh, you can incorporate some of these great things into your own homes, into your own lifestyles and communities. In Bermuda, 
because there is no fresh water, there are no fresh water lakes, we, every house in Bermuda will have a, a, a roof system and a cistern to collect the water uh, that we use to drink. Uh, and here, we, we capture the water off the roof, and then it comes uh, down the eave trough and then down the rainwater leader into a barrel and it has a spigot at the bottom which we can then use to you know f put a hose into or to fill a bucket and and then uh, irrigate our vegetable garden or whatever else you might need to irrigate. Yeah well the interesting thing about the materials that were sourced for this project is that um, in order as part of the lead process um, to get our lead gold certification we sourced all the materials for these cabins so everything all the wood all the windows and doors everything has been sourced locally which means that um, a lot of these materials haven't had haven't had a large carbon footprint applied to them in order to get them to site. They're not coming from halfway around the world. This is, you know, this is PEI cedar. You know, we're, we're dealing with very locally sourced materials, which, which is significant because when you think about a project like this, um, you often overlook things like, you know, how far did this material have to come to get to site? And that's a, that can often have a very significant impact on the carbon footprint associated with the uh, final product. The majority of the products that would have been put into those products uh, would have been from the Atlantic region, uh, probably more so maritime region than the, the Atlantic region for, for the for the exterior cladding on it for your uh, for your sh uh, cedar shingles. The uh, pine for the inside would have been manu manufactured here in uh, in uh, New Brunswick, and then the studs and uh, material like that would have been all manufactured in Atlantic Canada also. A uh, couple of things you'll see here on the wall. One is our LEED Gold certification, and we're extremely proud to be the first uh, recipients of the LEED Gold certification for Prince Edward Island, and I believe it's the second in Atlantic Canada. But uh, you know, LEED is a very uh, you know good organization. Uh, they encourage you know people to you know consider the environment, consider the economic. Uh, aspects of, of developing. Uh, the other device that you see on top of the refrigerator is a uh, energy detective um, and th that measures in real time your energy consumption and you can scroll back and see what your energy consumption has been over the past month or past week. Well, here's, uh, we'll take the display out and we'll uh, just do a little experimenting to, to see how it works. So um, let's come on over here. Uh, we'll, we'll turn on a few things around the house. Let's start here with the TV. We'll turn that on. You see we're at about 179 watts now before the TV comes on. Oh, and you see it's jumped up to 191, 192 watts. 209 watts. There it goes. So the TV's kicked in. We can see here it goes. It's still coming up. And uh, the TV will fluctuate quite a bit. Um, but this, this is showing us, yeah, there's a significant increase in energy consumption and we can walk around the, the facility here and turn things on and really, really understand how much energy we're using. So we'll turn on some more lights. There we go. We just jumped up to 259. Let's flick on a few more lights. Here we go. We're going through the roof. 284 watts now. We're climbing right up. Let's get crazy. Let's turn on the microwave. Let's see what happens now. Wow, and look at that. We just jumped up to 1,476 kilowatts. 18 cents per hour. So you can really see how different appliances affect your consumption within the cabin. You can really get a good idea of what you're using and how much that's costing you in real time and it also tells you how much it's costing you over the duration of your stay. Um, on top of that you also get some information on carbon dioxide um, consumption so for every kilowatt hour that you consume in the cabin that correlates to a specific amount of carbon dioxide that's put into the air. So we can really understand not only energy but also the carbon dioxide or carbon footprint um, impact that the use of it, usage of these energy devices has on uh, has on the planet. Um, so it's a really cool little device. Um, we'll start turning things back off because I can't stand leaving lights and TVs on when we're not using them. So we're gonna 
we're going to go back down and let's see. Okay. And we're dropping right back down to 300 watts. We've come down quite significantly. So we're uh, just about back down where we started. You know, they like the concept and we're hoping that more guests that are uh, eco-sensitive will come and stay here and, uh, you know, we look forward to their input and uh, we ask for suggestions. Um, but so far people have been enthused by the whole concept of uh, saving energy, saving water, you know, living in a more uh, eco-responsible fashion.